All right. This time we're doing a live unboxing for real. And this is an L.R. Brett's unboxing. The heat pack is cold. glad they did. Looks like my scuds got here just fine. They're pretty cold though. like the shrimp got here just fine too. <clears throat> They're pretty cold though. Like my my uh, box that I'm going to use is going to be way too big for the amount of water that's in that breather bag. scuds bring up a whole new question what exactly am I going to feed scuds to and for that you're gonna to have to wait a few more weeks but I have a very specific target for them in mind and as cold as they are I'm just going to add them directly to my five gallon bucket because my five gallon bucket's at 64 degrees and they are at 63 degrees. So I'm going to plop them straight into my five gallon bucket. Get these wastewater buckets out of the way.
scuds are a a river shrimp. Grammaris, they're called. And they are a crustacean that is found in most freshwater riverways. That is a very good live food to feed. They will survive in a five gallon bucket or a trash can or a tank or year round as long as the water doesn't freeze. And you can feed them with dead leaves, leftover fruit, and they are an excellent live food. So Lucas had some, so I'm getting them to culture them. All right. These shrimp are coming in at 60 degrees. The water in their bag is 60 degrees. And the water in my tank is 73 degrees. So I'm definitely going to need to do some uh, heavy duty Now I got the Skittles mix. Let's see if we can get a close up. puppies. Okay, so let's start getting them acclimatized. So Lucas's TDS is 359.
All right, I'm going to let these acclimatize, and I'll get back with you in a So here we are some four hours later. Now, my drip method should have gone on longer than that, probably, but unfortunately, my uh, I'd never tried out the valve that I was using, and it was dripping from the top and through the through the T. So after adding two-thirds more water and getting the temperature up to slightly above 70 degrees, I went ahead and dropped them in. Now. I'm just going to have to see. Now the question would have to come up, why shrimp? I've kept large cichlids, I've kept catfish, I've kept just about every kind of fish there is except for saltwater, which I never delved into. <clears throat> but after getting on YouTube, I've been watching Loop Diesel, I've been watching Mark Shrimp's Tanks, and I've been wa watching L.R. Brett's. And Lucas Brett's won several first place prizes at, at Chicago, and I was following that. And it just really got me excited about the possibilities of breeding shrimp. And I know that Lucas's lines are about as good as you're going to get, and they're also homebred. These are not shrimp that are being shipped in from out of the country in poor shape. These are shrimp that someone has taken a long time to acclimatize and to breed and to try to make true lines. So, for my wife's 55 gallon, she wants some blue and red shrimp. So, I told Lucas to send me the Skittles pack because I would get blue and red shrimp in these. And we're still not even started setting up my wife's shrimp tank. That's going to have to wait until we finish the bathroom remodel and some other things that have to be taken out of the way first and then we'll start setting that tank up so I set this hospital tank up to house these shrimp and hopefully we'll get them up big enough to bury and get some get some babies now this is something that I have never attempted before it's a challenge for me it's something that I'm it's it's encouraging in this hobby if you Try new things. Try stuff that is beyond your experience. Try something that you've never done before and see how it goes. It's a learning experience. You're going to engage your mind in new ways that you never have before. Now, I've kept all kinds of fish. I understand water. I understand water quality. I understand conditions that will keep these creatures in the optimal place so I'm applying all that experience into what I'm trying to do with these shrimp now whether I will fail or whether I will succeed that's something I don't know and that's part of the beauty of this hobby is you don't know you're 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 going into new areas, areas that you've never been in before. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing to try to expand your skills. It's a good thing to go into new areas. I'm not saying that you should dabble in this and dabble in that and never gain any skills in anything. I'm saying that you should become competent in one area and use those skills to try to become competent in another area. So for me, shrimp is a totally new world. I may fail miserably, I may succeed, but if I fail miserably, I'm going to learn from my experiences. I'm going to try to get better 
at doing doing this. Now, I've added some magnolia leaves to this tank. I have a magnolia tree outside in my yard, and so I know that the leaves are pesticide-free and that they're completely natural, and I've studied quite a bit on whether keep, keeping magnolia leaves in a fish tank is a good thing. I don't know that it's going to help my shrimp, but I have a suspicion that it will help my shrimp because microorganisms form on, on leaf detritus and shrimp, that's a uh, smorgasbord for shrimp. So I've added them. Now, normally my water quality, my TDS is in the four to 500 range, or at least it was in the last 10 months. <clears throat> But suddenly, about a month ago, I started getting 250 range on my TDS. I'm not sure if it's the product of winter. I'm not sure if it's the product of the more river water getting into the water supply. But Lucas's shrimp came in at TDS 359. The TDS in this tank is 300. My water quality, my water out of my tap TDS is 250 up a little maybe, maybe 260. So I'm not going to be able to use my exact tap water to keep these shrimp in the hardness that they require. So I use some of my older older uh, large tank water and I've supplemented it with RO and gotten it to the point of right at 300. So I'm hoping that that will keep keep these shrimp all right. I got my nitrates in this tank down between 5 and 0 and hopefully that will be good enough for them. Lucas's water that came in is, is almost zero nitrates in it. He uses a lot of plants in his tank. He believes in an ecosystem setup. And from the quality of his water that came in, I'm going to have to agree with him. Now, unfortunately, I'm not quite the hand at planted tanks that Lucas is. So I've got a leftover Anubius that survived from me ROing it to death in my big tank. I've got a moss ball. I've got some weeping moss in the tank. I have used a sponge filter from a used tank and squeezed it into this tank. This tank has been set up now for three months. I'm, it's probably not super mature, but it is mature enough, I believe, to, to keep these baby shrimp going. So, that's my Christmas, shrimpy, shrimpy Christmas unboxing. And I encourage you all to try to search out excellence in the people who you follow, excellence in the quality of the stock that they are selling, and excellence in you attempting to expand your abilities by moving into new areas that you haven't been in before. And that's my New Year's resolution, to keep learning in this hobby. Good luck, YouTube.